Good afternoon all. I trust everyone is safe and well. Welcome to the 30th webinar in the Civil Designer Open Classroom series. When we first launched this series, two weeks into the Level 5 South African lockdown, it was with the idea of providing a lockdown service to our clients who we had become so accustomed to assisting in their offices as part of their SLAs. The idea of four weekly short webinars at 2 o'clock every Tuesday to Friday covering the same modules on specific days was an interim idea, which we would happily have revised should the concept have failed. Well, it did not. And the amazing feedback that we have received from you, our attendees, has meant that the Open Classroom webinar series will remain in place beyond lockdown. The format may change as the future is a little uncertain at the moment, but communicating with you via the online webinar channel will remain in place. So back to today. Thursdays are Pipes Day and we welcome back Christopher Smith who will be facilitating today's water class. As always, please feel free to use the text chat service on your GoToWebinar floating dialogue to ask us any questions you may have during Chris's presentation. So good afternoon, Chris. Please take it away. Thanks, Charles, and welcome everybody to this webinar. Today we're going to be looking at the water house connections. We'll also be looking at the preset demand and preset pressure once again. I had some follow-up questions from the last demo that we had. Let's go ahead and have a look at the water house connections. Um, before we start, we need to look at our catalogs. So we'll go to Tools, Catalogs, and Water Usage Categories. Here you can see that it's pre-shipped with the CSIR values of low, medium and high, as well as the demands for the average demand per day per household. You'll see that we have the demand patterns preset in, seasonal peak and your instantaneous peak factors, which is a factor of the sum of your highest value in your demand plus your seasonal peak to give you that value. You'll notice that these are great and they're not editable we would encourage you to add your own or remove your own should you see fit to do so. I'll close this now and I'll go to our settings, connection defaults. Here you can see that we've got the different connection defaults, the low, the medium and the high. You'll also notice that we've got the daily demand for the medium and we've got the amount of units that will be terminating at the point of that connection. Here you can also set up your diameters of your house connection pipes. You can also set up your depth category for those connections. Uh, the long connection normally is underneath the street. It needs to be a lot deeper than the short connection. I'll close that now and I'll then zoom into the location where I would like to add some more house connections. So I'll come to this part here. Here you can see I've gone to do a long connection. So I'll say graphical connections draw. I'll say I want it to be an offset. It needs to be a double connection. I'll indicate the boundary with the street and then with the adjacent property. And you can see you've got your house connection at that location. I'll do a short connection at this location here with the street I must indicate first and then with the adjacent property and there's your short connection. If you're wanting to do a single connection, I'll untick the double and I'll select the property, the boundary and then the property itself. Great, so some properties you need to put in your own house connection manually. So we'll just change to freehand and the first place you click will be, um, it will connect to saddle 90 degrees to wherever you click. So if I click over here, it's going to put a saddle at that location. I can then press X if I want to keep it. And then I can change and say end connection or put it in. If I put one over here, you'll see again, it's going to snap 90 degrees to that location. So if I want to be somewhere here, I can then just press X to jump to where I was and put that house connection in and say end connection. So I've got my connection point at that location. If you're wanting to edit a property connection, you can go to the connections and edit. You can select that property. It will show you 
the item, which you can then go and change any of the aspects of it. You can also change the amount of units of, of houses or dwellings on that location and the CSIR value, draw off value that you would like to have for that connection. You can also delete by going to connections remove and you can select that connection to remove it. If I go and just draw it back again, just to get it back again. Great, now that we've put our house connections in, we can go and analyze our project. So I'll do a time simulation over 24 hours. We can say start and we can close that. We can now, let me just zoom in a bit closer. We can go to our display settings and we can have a look at perhaps looking at our discharge. We can keep that color ramp, it's fine. And we can then choose to show discharge in liters um, per second. And I'd also like to look at the pressure, the residual head. So we can show those two items and the discharge. And we can zoom in to have a look. So you've got some low volume, uh, low um, discharge here, as well as your liters per second. Remember that your pressure uh, all of these items will change during the course of the 24 hours so if we go to our settings and we display different times of day you'll see at different times of day you're going to have different values displayed just close that and i'll just zoom out again We can then also decide to show our pressures as well. You can then also view your pressures and those will also change over the course of 24 hours as well. I can remove that for now. Great, now that we've covered those items, we can also look at covering the quantities. So if we go to analyze, we can look at our connection quantities. And here you will see that you have a, sin a single connection, the short, and the long, and the total, as well as the double, the, which is the short, the long. Now that isn't the total of urban connected, that is the total of saddles connected so you'll see here under saddles well it also matches that amount of uh, connections and you've got the saddles for on this um, single and the double connections and the saddles that sizes that are connected you've also got the pipe lengths for the different um, connections uh, pipe diameters if you go to data summary you'll see that you have your uh, properties being um, serviced so here you can see your service plots is the amount of properties that are being serviced by these connections and here you can see those figures again that we saw just now which is your double and single connections you can also see your demands for your network required. So this is the water that you need to supply the network with to be able to meet the demands of those houses. Also, if you zoom in, let's just go to any node and we select it. We'll go to the water operations, edit node data. You will see the demand due to the connections in liters per second at that location or through that location to supply these different nodes. Um, we had some questions this week on how to edit that. This item is not editable. You um, can add your connections at this location. The older way of doing it was to, um, to count the amount of properties in this location and then set the demand based on those amounts. So it would be the sum of these properties and that sums uh, times by the demand per 
household and you would then put the liters per second and apply a demand pattern in that location. So this came up this week on why we were using this to supply a network. Um, so let's just cover that quickly. So that covers the house connections. I'm going to just go over to the supplying of the network. So if we select this node, this is the node that we sele selected to supply the network with. If we go to the edit node data, here you can see that we've got a pressure that we've applied to the network. So that is a positive value because it is feeding into the network. If you, however, were not given a pressure by the local municipality, and they gave you rather liters per second, then you can supply an, the network with um, a value of liters per second, but you would need to give it a negative value of, say, 20 liters per second. The reason it needs to be negative is because it's not a demand, it's the opposite of that. It is supplying the network, not taking off the network. And then you would also, this is optional, you might want to just choose to have a um, a flat line pattern rather. I think the flat line pattern is one. Let's have a look. Yes, so it's a factor of one which can be applied. So it will be a constant value of 20 liters per second. Or if the municipality can give you that um, in the hours and the minutes, if they can tell you what the demand is going to be, that would be a extra help to modeling your network. Some other questions that came in this week was the placement of reservoirs and pumps. Um, let's go and have a look at that. There were some questions that came through with that. I just want to close this project. I um, don't need to save anything. And let's go and open up the demo data set. Great. With this demo, I just want to make sure that I'm in water mode. I'm just going to go to File, Project Settings, and we can just create a demo 3 file. It's fine. And so, OK. Great. So we need to place the reservoir at a location that is best suited, preferably on the higher part of the town. So I'll go and say Draw Reservoir, and it will place the reservoir for me. You will see if I go to render view that it has placed it on the ground and we'll talk about levels in a moment. I want to bring water into the network and a common mistake that people do is they go and say draw pipes. They will click somewhere here where the water is coming into the network, click near the reservoir and then click where it must connect to the reticulation system. They'll then right click and say end pipe and they'll think it is connected to the network which it is not. So that's one of the mistakes that gets made. I'm just going to delete all of that, press spacebar to start again. I will select where I want the water to come in to the network. Then I'll select the reservoir or near to the reservoir. And you'll see I haven't selected exactly at the center, but I'll say end pipe. And you'll see it snaps to the center. Now I know it has connected to that reservoir. Now if I click somewhere here again, deliberately not in the center, and I connect to where I want it to be connecting to the reticulation system, I can say end pipe. It will then ask if I want to snap to the node or if I want to insert, um, split the pipe and insert a node. I'll snap to that node itself. And there you can see it has snapped to the node. I always prefer to have, I uh, can strip out this information for now and just show the IDs. That's the most important for me at this time. I've got pipe number six flowing in and pipe number seven flowing out. So I need to go to my edit reservoir data and go to my inlet, uh, sorry, my connections. We've got six, that is the inlet, and we've got seven, that is the outlet. Now we can talk about the levels. This is your control levels here and your capacities as well. You do not have to worry about the pipes not going uphill up into the reservoir itself. Um, let's first cover the ground floor level. So if we go to our terrain and we go to graphical annotate elevation, I'm going to choose the one with the leader, select the center and place a leader. So now I know what the height needs to be. 
I can then select this. Sorry, I need to be back in water mode. And then I can go to water operations. Now you can see that we've got our floor level of the reservoir. And we've got our full supply level as well as our inlet level. So the floor level of the reservoir can be higher up, but you must just make space and capacity for, for the actual um, volume as well. So if we go and change that and put it up into the air a bit, so let's put it, say, 10 meters into the air. So we'll change that to 7, and then we'll need to um, add that to, say, 85. Might be a bit too big, but just as a practice for now. We can then go and have a look at what does that look like in terms of shape. So it immediately updates the shape and you can then start to play around with the shape. If you want to change the shape itself, you can go to your shape and change it to say a sphere. You've got your depth percentages and your volumes that take up. So you can go to your render view again and you can see that the shape is taken. There's also some other shapes available to you as well. So not rendering correctly. There you can see your different shapes as well. When it comes to um, what you can also what you can also do is if you're struggling with understanding this full supply level, sorry this floor level or any of the levels in this location, you can always press F1. It'll take you directly and explain each item for you with regards to that dialogue. So the F1 button works on all the um, dialogues. As we spoke about earlier, this node needs to be the node that you sp specify to have a um, demand, a negative value, or a pressure coming in, say, negative to bar. The, when placing a pump into the network, if you need to add energy into the line, you can always go and say add uh, draw pumps. The important thing is not to snap on any of the nodes, but to snap on the pipe itself. And we'll cover nodes at a later um, time. We'll go into more depth into pumps when we have some more time for it. The important thing with the pumps that people do get wrong is to look at the um, the ID number of the pipe that you are connected to. If it doesn't match the pipe that you've clicked on, then just re really need to investigate that. That's the one mistake that often happens. Great, I hope that uh, sums up um, how to work with reservoirs. You need to, one other thing is that you need to have um, a water supply coming into the reservoir and a water supply and a pipe coming out. You can't only have a reservoir um, flowing. You need to have water coming into the, into the reservoir for your model to actually work. That's just about everything that we have time for today. Thanks very much. Back to you, Charles. Thank you, Chris. That was awesome. And thank you to all attended today. See you tomorrow at the same time and place using the same link when Chris will be back for a slight change in the standard schedule where he will be discussing how to best utilize our support services. Have a great afternoon and goodbye for now.